All right, welcome everyone to the November 2020 virtual field trip uh, to Richfield Heritage Preserve. My name is Michelle Brocious and I'm your bird walk leader tonight. Um, a quick note for those of you who have never um, attended our virtual field trip before. Uh, last month I invited birders, both um, members and uh, guests of Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society to visit the Richfield Heritage Preserve in search of bird species or animals, uh, plants, uh, just good, some good hiking, uh, however they wanted to enjoy the space and then asked uh, all the participants to submit back to me um, something of their experience so that um, usually consists of bird species lists uh, journaling and photography. Um, so next slide please. All right, so Richfield Heritage Preserve is a 336 acre property consisting of lakes, streams, and woodland trails that is currently managed by Richfield Joint Recreation District since Richfield Village and Richfield Township jointly purchased the property in 2014. The property was formerly owned by the Girl Scouts of Northeast Ohio for 80 years. During this stint, the property was known as Crow Halaka. The camp closed in 2011. Uh, prior to Girl Scout ownership, the land belonged to two separate estates. James Kirby, who patented 160 inventions over his lifetime, owned 224 acres of the land on which he built several buildings, a water-powered mill wheel, and a patented lake that is designed with dams and underground pipes that run under the lake bed to keep out silt. The Neal family owned the additional acreage that would also be purchased for Crow Halaka. For more information, uh, please visit the Richfield Heritage Preserve website as well as the Friends of Crow Halaka website. In August 2020, Corey Ringel, president of Friends of Crow Halaka, was Western Cuyahoga Audubon's guest speaker at our summer speaker series and provided a wonderful presentation regarding Richfield Heritage Preserve. So I have included the link in the scrapbook. Um, you can click on that link if you wish to hear the recording uh, for a comprehensive history of the location. And on the left-hand side, um, a photo of Kirby's Mill as seen from the opposite side of Lake Janelle, uh, the lower lake by Tom Fishburn. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so I identified a couple of target species uh, for people going to the preserve to try and locate, the first being woodpeckers. Uh, so woodpeckers represent the family, I'm going to mispronounce it, Pi Picidae or Picidae. Uh, they have zygodactyl feet, usually two toes facing front and one facing back, and strong tail feathers that aid the bird in clinging to tree trunks in search of insects beneath the bark. Uh, they use their formidable beaks to peck at the bark to find food and also to excavate their nest cavities in dead trees. They usually have an undulating flight pattern. Uh, males also sport some red on their head, although the red-headed woodpecker is not sexually dimorphic. That means they look the same. Uh, the female red-bellied woodpecker and pileated woodpecker have less red than their male counterparts. And in northern flickers, the field mark that distinguishes males from females is the presence of a mustache in the males. Uh, so two pictures of uh, two different woodpeckers. On the left, a male red-bellied woodpecker, and on the right, a male downy woodpecker um, at Richfield Heritage Preserve by Tom Fishburn. Uh, next slide, please. And then also uh, the second target species, nuthatches. Uh, so the white-breasted nuthatch is a common feeder bird with clean black, gray, and white markings. Uh, white-breasted nuthatches are active, agile little birds with an appetite for insects and large meaty seeds. They get their common name from their habit of jamming large nuts and acorns into tree bark, then whacking them with their sharp bill to hatch out the seed from the inside. White-breasted nuthatches may be small, but their voices are loud, and often their insistent nasal yammering will lead you right to them. And that's the description uh, provided by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, and I provided the link there uh, to more comprehensive um, information about the bird. And then a picture that I provided on the right of a white-breasted nuthatch at the location. Uh, next slide, please. 
And then also the red-breasted nuthatch, uh, an intense bundle of energy at your feeder. Red-breasted nuthatches are tiny active birds of north woods and western mountains. These long-billed, short-tailed songbirds travel through tree canopies with chickadees, kinglets, and woodpeckers, but stick to tree trunks and branches where they search bark furrows for hidden insects. Their excitable Yankee calls sound like tiny tin horns being honked in the treetops. Uh, that description by the Cornell Lab. And then additionally, I have this note to add. Uh, there has been an eruption of red-breasted nut hatches this autumn in the northeast U.S. These birds rely on cyclical food sources, primarily cone seeds from spruce and fir trees, and therefore their distribution varies from year to year depending on the abundance of their food. And we get an eruption in northeast Ohio usually every two years. Um, I've heard that that might not always be the case, but it's usually every couple of years. And then we note... The red-breasted nuthatch was sighted at uh, Richfield Heritage Preserve, but no one got a photo of it. So I, um, I dug a little deeper to the, the previous uh, field trip. Uh, Tom Fishburn did manage to get a picture of one at uh, the Cleveland Lakefront Nature Preserve. So just so you can see what it looks like, um, I put that in there. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so diving into um, participant submissions. So Marianne and John Henderson uh, saw 18 species when they went birding on November 12th. Uh, Marianne has this to say. Uh, we enjoyed a beautiful sunny morning at Richfield Heritage Preserve. Thanks to Corey Ringel and WCS for bringing this location to our attention. The main trail, a three-mile loop, takes one through the woods and past the historic buildings. I was a Girl Scout and a leader, and very much enjoyed walking familiar paths and peering into the windows of cabins where I once stayed. Uh, we did not see many species of birds, however, we were impressed with the large number of bluebirds. Uh, woodpeckers, jays, and chickadees are abundant. We did not see a pileated, but we saw plenty of evidence that the bird had been around. We were expecting more sparrows and were surprised to see so few. However, a handsome male towhee came out and posed for us. Uh, she says the trail is well marked and not heavily traveled, perfect for social distancing, and restrooms are available. And then uh, she provided a picture on the right hand side there of the grist mill at Richfield Heritage Preserve. Uh, next slide, please. All right, and then here is their bird list. Um, I, I always list out all the birds, but I highlight a few notable ones. Uh, so I was really happy to see that uh, they had seen so many hawks. So a Cooper's hawk, a sharp shinned or a Cooper's hawk, and a red tailed hawk. Uh, and then target species, eight red-bellied woodpecker on their visit, uh, one downy woodpecker, uh, one red-breasted nuthatch, six white-breasted nuthatch, and one Carolina wren, um, which is always a really cool bird to see whether or not it's the target species. And uh, a really great picture of a Carolina wren on the left-hand side taken by Tom Fishburn at the preserve. And next slide, please. And then a, a friend of Marianne's, um, Kim Lembeck, uh, visited the preserve on November 13th and provided these two lovely photos. Uh, so I just I call it Autumn Scenes at Richfield Heritage Preserve um, for you to enjoy there. All right, next slide, please. All right, Alan Rand uh, saw 11 species when he uh, went birding on November 13th. He says, made one trip to Richfield Heritage Preserve Richford, oh gosh, Richfield Heritage Preserve on Friday the 13th, nonetheless. The grounds look like something straight from a movie. Uh, not many birds in the area that afternoon, but I bet it's alive during peak spring and fall migrations. And I, I would agree with that. I'm definitely going to go back uh, during peak migration season. Uh, it's a beautiful location, and I, I bet birds just love it there. Um, so here is his list. Uh, he did see target species, red-bellied woodpecker, um, also black-capped chickadee, and tufted titmouse. Uh, and then a, a picture of a red-bellied woodpecker in flight by Tom Fishburn on the right-hand side. And that was also taken at the preserve. All right, next slide, please. All right, my submission. I saw 11 species. I uh, visited the preserve two times. So I visited Richfield Heritage Preserve on Friday, November 27th and Saturday, November 28th. 
Uh, the morning of the 27th was very cloudy with temps in the high 40s. This was my first visit ever to the preserve. Therefore, I had consulted with the Ohio Ornithological Society's uh, Birding in Ohio website to gain additional information about good birding spots at the location. I had already selected my route through the preserve and planned to hit two of um, the Ohio Ornithological Society's highlighted birding spots. I parked at the main parking area off Broadview Road and took a connector trail to the Buckeye Trail that hugs the upper lake. Uh, almost immediately on the connector trail, I encountered two red-bellied woodpeckers in the forest near a picnic shelter. I soon came to a narrow meadow footbridge, footbridge over a dam and knew I was approaching the first birding spot. The lake was to my right, and the advice was to look left along the forest edge for birds. I didn't see anything there until I had almost reached the west side of the lake and birding spot two when I finally did see some bird activity, black-capped chickadees and another red-bellied woodpecker. Um, and on the right-hand side, a photo I took of um, the red-bellied woodpecker, or one of them at the picnic shelter um, on the connector trail. Uh, next slide, please. I continued along the Buckeye Trail around the lake and saw even more black-capped chickadees. I wasn't seeing any nut hatches at this point and thought to myself that I should have identified chickadees as the target species instead, as there were so many. I came across more woodpeckers, both downy and hairy were present. I also saw blue jay, dark-eyed junco, and eastern bluebird. I decided to journey a short ways on the bridal trail to Gemini Cabin and walk behind the cabin to get a good look into the woods in a secluded spot. Here I saw a male and female northern cardinal and another downy woodpecker. Uh, from there I decided to return to the Buckeye Trail and head back to the parking area. I passed a few beautiful historic buildings and a really interesting dead tree. And as I was coming close to the parking lot, I finally spotted the second target species, a white-breasted nuthatch. Um, so I did get uh, both target species in on my first visit. And on the left-hand side, a picture of an eastern bluebird at the preserve that I took. All right, next slide, please. Okay, and so um, two pictures here. I took a photo on the left there of the narrow metal footbridge, um, and then uh, the interesting dead tree on the right um, at Richfield Heritage Preserve. I really like that tree, and I have this note to say about it. Uh, in September 2020, WCAS challenged birders to the Dead Tree Birding Challenge to raise awareness of the importance of dead trees to local wildlife. The challenge involved watching a tree for a weekend to identify all the birds that use the tree for whatever reason, resting, foraging, sheltering, etc. I would love to come back to Richfield Heritage Preserve and watch this tree for a while. So I, I might just do that. Um, next slide, please. All right, so November 28th, um, the morning of the 28th was sunnier than the previous day, but slightly chillier with temps in the mid-40s. I decided to follow the same route as the previous day to see if it would offer the same or different birds. And again, I didn't see much of anything until I had reached the west side of the upper lake. The flurry of activity there included American goldfinch, eastern bluebird, a very photogenic black-capped chickadee, and a red-bellied woodpecker that flew overhead to one of the small islands in the lake. Continuing, continuing along the route, I spotted a blue jay on my way to Gemini Cabin. However, only the male northern cardinal was present behind the cabin today. At this point, I decided to stray from my previous day's route and continue on the bridal trail until I came across a festive Christmas tree next to a storybook trail. I enjoyed my walk on storybook. I didn't see any birds, but the scenery was beautiful and the trail passes by a conifer grove. I had hoped to see a red-breasted nuthatch here, but no such luck. Um, a photo on the right um, that I took of an eastern bluebird at the preserve. Uh, next slide, please. All right, from here, I believe I turned onto the utility trail and then back onto the Buckeye Trail as I ended up back at the same narrow metal bridge by the upper lake. I decided to circle the lake one more time and only saw one additional bird, but it was a belted kingfisher, so that's a great additional bird to see, in my opinion. Uh, when I reached the north side of the lake, I turned east to walk by the historic buildings and back to the parking area. Here I found two additional species of dark-eyed junco and white-breasted nuthatch, again. Um, overall, I give Richfield Heritage Preserve two thumbs up, not only for its birding, but for its beauty, both of which can be difficult to achieve in late autumn. Um, I will definitely make a return visit in the future. And there on the left-hand side is a picture of the belted kingfisher. Uh, it was really far away, but and that's what I got. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. 
And here is my photogenic black cap chicky. This is all the same bird. It just, uh, I probably took over 100 pictures, and so I decided on these six as a sequence. As you can see, it's just sitting there looking around, stretching its wings, stretching its tail. Um, it just sat there you know, for a while, um, and it finally did fly away. I didn't have to walk away from it, but um, it's a good thing because I had too many photos to sift through, <laughs> which is a good problem to have as a photographer. Uh, next slide, please. All right, and then um, there's the, the Christmas tree I found by a storybook trail on the left. In the middle is uh, when you start on storybook trail, it begins with this really narrow boardwalk, uh, which was kind of cool. And then, you know, just around that bend there, it does end, and you, you have your normal dirt path. Um, and then on the right is a view from a bridge. I'm not exactly sure where, but it was really pretty. And all of these I think I took with my cell phone camera and not my, it, it just, I was too close to the tree and um, yeah, I just took them with my cell phone. All right, next slide, please. And then on the left there, uh, another a shot of a white-breasted nuthatch. And then on the right is a picture of the North House um, at Richfield Heritage Preserve. I've always loved Tudor-style houses and I just, this was very scenic um, across the lake just sitting there in the trees. I had to take a picture of it. All right, next slide, please. And then uh, another photo of the white-breasted nuthatch. hatch. I just thought that was a really interesting position it had gotten itself into. Um, so glad I captured that moment. Uh, so here's my bird list uh, for red-bellied woodpecker. I saw red-bellied woodpecker both days. Um, I saw a downy and hairy on my first day, but not on my second visit. I saw a white-breasted nuthatch both days, and then the belted kingfisher on day two. All right, next slide, please. All right, so Sean's visit, uh, he went to the preserve four times. We have an overachiever amongst us, and identified 13 species. Um, he says, I was able to visit the Richfield Heritage Preserve four times during the month of November, 11, 7, 14, 21, and 26, with all trips being between the hours of 9 and 1. Uh, each time I went, I was sure to take the same path, starting to the right of parking lot down the gravel road. It wasn't long down that path that I encountered several birds picking through the berries and checking the ground for anything left over. I was unable to capture shots of these birds as they flew away before I was in range. The grouping of birds consisted of chickadees, downy woodpeckers, and an eastern bluebird. As I continued, I saw a bench by the lake and I went to check it out. Uh, from the bench, there was a great view of the lake. However, the only wildlife I saw was a blue jay that happened to be hopping around within the branches of nearby pine tree pine trees. I continued along the path and went past the garden to find a wooded area that had a large amount of woodpeckers. Downy and red-bellied woodpeckers were definitely in control of the area. At this time I couldn't hear at this time I couldn't hear any of them pecking at trees, but they were actively feeding and playing as the sun was making its way into the area. There were also a few dark-eyed juncos hanging around too. A beautiful photo on the right-hand side there of red-bellied woodpecker at the preserve by Sean Missig. All right, next slide, please. Oh, and then two additional photos that uh, he described on the last slide, the, the blue jay on the left and a dark guy junco on the right, uh, both at the preserve. All right, next slide. Oh, and then uh, Downy Woodpecker on the left and another red-bellied on the right uh, by Sean. Some nice shots there. Next slide, please. And I'm going through this rather quickly in interest of time, um, but as I said, you'll all be getting this. Uh, it'll be made available, and you can take um, a, a longer look at these pictures uh, when you have the presentation. All right, so another photo of a red-bellied woodpecker at the preserve um, by Sean Missig. Next slide, please. All right, when I came to the first fork in the road, I went to the right and I took notice of a red squirrel. Red squirrels are my absolute favorite. 
mine too, Sean. I love them. And this one didn't mind posing for a few shots. It had perfectly perched itself on a broken branch and was eating something. I thought maybe it was a pine cone, but after a closer look, it appears that it was munching on a small pine branch, needles and all. I didn't have to go far, and I found another red squirrel. This one was perched on the top of a cutoff tree and was eating an acorn or some sort of nut. Again, it didn't mind having its picture taken, and I was able to get several angles. Uh, and here's, here's all the um, three photos of the squirrel that Sean took at the preserve. Next slide, please. All right, I went a little further up the trail and didn't find many signs of life, so I came back to the fork and continued on the original path. Around the next bend, I found chickadees feeding on berries within the barren looking brush off the path. They were flying in and out rather quickly and only stopped to plan their next move. I did not see much life until I was closer to the other side of the lake. As I made my way along the path, I ended up at Kirby's house by the second lake that is currently drained for renovation work. The house looked amazing and that it, and that it was built in a wonderful location. I will definitely be making a trip back after the lake has been filled back up to capture the full beauty of the area. I pushed onward and made my way to the mill. Though it needs some work, it was a sight to be seen, a standing piece of history, and I'm thankful to say that I saw it. Thankfully, the trees had all dropped their leaves, and I was able to get shots from several different angles and vantage points. My zoom lens came in handy here. Even though the lake had been drained, there was still a small flow coming through, creating a waterfall on the other side of the bridge. It gave off a calming sound and helped create some ambient noise to really bring out the peaceful nature of this area. Uh, so a photo of a black capped chickadee on the right. Uh, and we'll see more pictures on the next slide, please. All right, and here's a photo of Kirby's Mill on the left and right, um, and the one on the right is taken a little further back, so that you can see um, that little stream there. Very, very beautiful picture. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, and two more shots. Next slide, please. I continued my hike along the trail and got to the other side of the lake where I had to get a shot of the mill from a distance. The shot I captured was from Thanksgiving after we had rain during the days prior. The small creek that had flowed was now flooded and a lake had some water to it. I can't wait to get a shot like this with a full lake. Further up the path was a wooded area that was densely populated with pines. I was hoping to find some larger birds, like hawks, owls, etc., hiding within the branches, but there was nothing. Even though there was nothing within the trees, the area was quiet and made for a nice walk. Uh, so that photo that Sean described uh, in the paragraph on the left-hand side of the mill across the lake. Uh, next slide, please. I made my way to the path heading to the upper lake. I found a male northern flicker hiding within a tree. As soon as he saw me, he was gone. Not before I snapped a few shots, though. The path continued along the small creek, and this was my favorite part to walk. There was no noise other than nature, the sound of the water, the birds, squirrels, and chipmunks playing, no sounds from cars, people, or any part of the outside world. I found myself walking extra slow and even stopping at times to take it all in. I could have gone the rest of my trip without seeing anything, and this would have been enough for me. However, the upper lake had quite different plans for me. And I think that is such a fun picture right there um, of the northern flicker just kind of peeking out of that uh, tree cavity. So that's, a, that's a great shot, Sean. All right, next slide, please. The upper lake provided the most wildlife during all of my visits. My first trip, I saw two red-tailed hawks that were unfortunately flying away as I got there. They disappeared into the woods, and I didn't see them again on any of my other trips. Even though I couldn't catch the hawks, I was able to capture a kingfisher. Since I saw my first one earlier this year, these birds have fascinated me. From their distinctive look to their wild call that almost sounds like a war cry as they are streaking through the air like a jet fighter. I was happy to capture a male kingfisher that was perched close to the dock area. He then flew into the middle of the lake and landed on the down tree that was out of my range. I walked across the metal bridge and I wasn't sure if I was going to make it. <laughs> The floor of the bridge flexed as I walked across, and I was ready to hold on for my life. Thankfully, this did not happen, and I was on the other side. The tree line to my left came to life with birds. 
chirping and flying back and forth. I stopped to find a flock of eastern bluebirds that were feeding within the foliage and the ground. I had never seen so many bluebirds at one time, and I captured many great shots. I was able to get males, females, and one of my luckiest shots yet, I found a male bluebird perched in a tree and started snapping shots. As I did, another bird flew through the scene, but I couldn't tell what it was or if it would even be in focus. When I reviewed my photos, I found that I not only captured the bluebird, but the bird streaking through was a goldfinch, per the Merlin app. Goldfinches have eluded me many times this year, so it was nice to capture one. Um, so there is the photo of the belted kingfisher, um, taken by Sean at the preserve. Next slide, please. And then here are the bluebirds that Sean was talking about. And then that um, picture on the right, uh, you can see um, in like the lower left section, there's the goldfinch um, kind of flying by the bluebird that's perched there. So that's a really fun photo for sure. All right, next slide, please. And a female eastern bluebird on the left-hand side. All right, on my trip Thanksgiving Day, the kingfisher made another appearance, but I was unable to photograph it during that trip. His appearance was still special, though. My dad and brother were able to join me for the Thanksgiving trip. I had been telling them about this crazy bird that looks angry and flies through the air while screaming its war cry, and I hoped I would be able to show it to them. The kingfisher waited until we were almost around the lake to make his grand entrance. I heard his call and looked to the lake as he weaved through the sky in true jet fighter fashion before perching on the opposite side of the lake. For me, this was definitely a highlight and really brought the trip to a fitting end. In the spirit of Thanksgiving, I would like to say that I'm thankful for these virtual field trips. They have brought some much needed excitement into the year that has been full of hardships and uncertainty. I'm also thankful for all of you that are a part of these. I have learned a lot from your submissions and I've been able to apply that to my trips to enhance my experience in the field. Thank you for letting me be a part of this. I look forward to many more virtual field trips to come. And thank you for saying that, Sean. That makes me feel so good. And I'm, I'm really glad that you and others have enjoyed these virtual field trips. All right, next slide, please. All right, in November, I found a deal I couldn't pass up, and I decided to purchase a macro lens. My trip on the 21st would be the test run in the wild for this lens, and I was amazed at what I was able to capture. My first subject was a mosquito I found within the pines. I thought, shouldn't you be gone by now? I'm glad it wasn't, though, as it proved to be a wonderful subject and allowed me to experiment with different apertures to get the desired effect I was looking for. I didn't stop there, though. I found some small stone flies running around on a rock. At several points, they almost appeared to be fighting. They were also quite fast, and this put my skills to the test. I didn't get a high percentage of keepers, but I was happy with the ones that came out. As I was photographing the stoneflies, a small spider caught my eye, and this was now my priority. Again, not a high amount of keepers, but I had managed a few good ones in there. I ran the image through Google Lens, and it determined that the small spider was called an Aragon which is a genus of dwarf spiders that feed on small insects. If I hadn't, if I hadn't of captured, oh, I'm sorry, if I hadn't have been photographing the stoneflies, I would have never seen the spider. For me, Macro will be opening up new adventures in photography along with furthering my knowledge of the outside world. And so there on the right hand side is the picture of the mosquito taken by Sean's Macro lens. Uh, next slide, please. And then we have the stonefly and the Aragon spider at the preserve by Sean. Um, and Sean, I want to mention that there's a, a Facebook group called, I think it's called like Spidering Ohio. They probably would love to see that photograph if you want to join that group. All right, next slide, please. All right, and this is Sean's list, uh, notable species, the red-tailed hawk. Oh, fantastic, you saw two of them at, at once flying, flying away. Uh, he, he got the, the target species, the downy woodpecker and the red belly woodpecker and northern flicker. Uh, and of course, the belted kingfisher is always a fun bird to see. And on the left hand side there, a, a picture of a female downy woodpecker at the preserve. All right, next slide, please. And Tom, this is your submission. I, I know you want to take this on, so go ahead and take yourself off mute and whenever you want to speak. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, right, can you hear me all right? Yep, you loud okay. and clear. 
All right, goody. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed my time uh, hiking through the through the camp and um, the former camp, anyway. And um, yeah, I I enjoy taking different routes. Is what I did. I I had was familiar with some of the routes um, from my previous trips back. 2014 was when they had the open houses. Um, and I got back there, I think, in 2016, but I haven't been there since 2016. So I did want to explore uh, this uh, uh, preserve quite a bit. And um, so I was writing about it since my second visit. I wanted to explore the trails to the Northwoods, which I hadn't been to before, and the open space on the west side uh, where the power lines run. There's a creek that, that feeds the upper lake up there. And... Um, that, that creek, though, was a bit slippery, um, but I managed it. I still take some chances and get across there. I grabbed uh, um, a walking stick to help me get over there, but um, I'm, uh, i got to be careful more and more. I don't, my footwork isn't as good as it used to be, um, but this, I found a brown creeper. That was probably the best bird that I actually found. Um, I didn't find a lot of birds uh, in my whole four trips. Um, but um, I did see a brown creeper. I couldn't get a good picture of it, though. It was kind of dark there. Um, but, um, but that was nice to see. Um, and the bluebirds that I saw were more out in the open. Uh, the picture here uh, was on the wood side. Um, but um, different from where uh, Michelle and Sean saw their bluebirds, I didn't see any bluebirds in that section. I saw the bluebirds on the western side. Um, so th there's one of the photos there. You can uh, switch to the next slide. And uh, I did. We talked about these red-bellied woodpeckers. I saw and heard plenty of, of red-bellied woodpeckers. Um, and uh, we were talking about um, uh, the bird songs. I've mentioned that I learned some bird songs uh, or calls. Anyway, it was new to me. Um, very different than. Uh, what I hear at other times of the year. Um, Michelle, do you want me to give this a try at this point? Yeah, and, go ahead. Um, um, yeah, just ask Betsy to click and she can try it and see if it works. And I got a plan B if it doesn't. So, Betsy, you want to try that tea kettle? I guess there. I think I have a better It's way. Audubon. Yeah, it's Audubon, so you should be fine allowing it. No, we can't hear it. I can't hear it anyway. You might have to do Here, the plan B. Something. Okay. Okay, yeah, close that out. Let me try something. Because um, I figured... A I've got a second computer here, and if it's loud enough, you might be able to hear it. But actually, talking about the the red-bellied woodpecker, um, I just as soon start with that one. And um, I was hearing um, a call that I thought sounded more like a robin, and and I was hearing this over and over, and I realized it was the red-bellied woodpecker. You hear that all right? I heard it. It was um, a little a little soft, but I heard it. Maybe turn it up though too, but uh, I won't do that one again necessarily. But the the thing that, that I wanted to mention was um, was how something I learned. About, I, I like bird songs, but I'm not real good at it. But I do um, uh, familiar with a lot of the basic ones and. Um, the red belly sounded a lot like what I was used to hearing from a robin that I call a yuck type call that they that they do. Um, but um, that one, that one um, was a little bit different. And then um, let's see the uh, the reason why we're talking about the tea kettle thing was uh, 
was the uh, Carolina Wren that I discovered too. Uh, that was on the west side too by the um, uh, summer barn and uh, there's a riding rink over there. And Is that any good? So so? I heard it. Mm -hmm. okay. um, anyway, that was uh, that's not the normal um, song that I hear for the um, the Carolina Wren, and uh, just wonder if maybe I'll try this. That better? That's much better. Yeah, loud and that clear with that one. Um, that's the normal um, song of the Carolina Wren that I call the tea kettle, um, and kind of a full full type song for that. Um, and then um, the other one, maybe I can get it here. But um, uh, Sean was mentioning the sound of the um, the kingfisher. Well, I heard a song, I heard a call um, that, that sounded like Harry Woodpecker. Hang on a second. Harry Woodpecker. I, I thought it, at first it was a, a kingfisher, but then I, I saw the bird. That's what they call a sputter, or the, the hairy woodpecker. Um, I pulled out my app as soon as I saw the bird and said, my goodness, maybe that's a, you know, a hairy song. I'm familiar with the downy woodpecker song, um, which was more of a descending kind of wing. Um, but, so that's another one I learned, too. I didn't know they, they made a sound that sounded more like a, a, a belt of kingfisher. So um, that was part of my fun. Was the bird song? Um, let me go to the next slide. Okay, so um, had lots of chickadees. I did see lots of chickadees, and uh, but most of them were pretty active. They didn't give me an opportunity like they gave Michelle there uh, to just, just kind of sit there. Um, the, the chickadee fo photo there I saw in the back. Near the upper lake, uh, behind um, the uh, Amity House is where I saw that. And then uh, the Mallards, I think, were pretty regular on the northern part of the upper lake as well. So, uh, next slide. And then in the garden, I um, I caught some things before they. Uh, well, this was like my first visit up there, so still early on. Um, at the Spitz Garden, the, the purple beautyberry that I learned about um, was was there. That was hard to miss. And I was surprised that some obedient plant was still there too. In, in that, that late, I, I didn't even recognize the obedient plant, but I was able to look it up. Okay, next slide. And um, the blue jays, most of those were pretty active, but I managed to peg one there. Uh, at least partially of it, and um, it was up in the north woods when I where I saw the the um, white breasted nuthatch as well. That was pretty active as well. Next slide. Yeah, just a couple other um, views um, towards the little bridge there that crosses over on the north side of the upper lake. That's the Everybody takes that picture. That's a, that's a, a neat little spot. And then uh, the Christmas fern I, I recognized. Um, 
So I had uh, taken a couple shots of that as well. Next slide. Yeah, and there on the left of the bluebird, that was the, the, the most colorful one that I saw in some good light. And that was all the way on the western boundary uh, fence on the barbed wire there. And um, in, in the, on the western side, too, near the barn is where I got that chickadee. That, those chickadees were, there's several of them in there. And that was the only good shot I got. And it was like eye level. Um, and it wasn't, it was different. It was a different habitat. It wasn't uh, in the kind of the tree areas that I, I would see some other ones. It was more brushy areas. And they were, they were pretty busy in there for a while. It's right by the riding rink that uh, is over there by the summer barn. Next slide. And one of the trails that I really enjoyed was the Buckeye Trail that goes from the uh, south end of the Upper Lake um, along the, um, the creek as the water flows down to the lower lake. And uh, there's an oxbow down there. And it um, comes out just uh, near the Garfield um, Dance Hall. Uh, where that uh, intake dam is, and um, that's where I spotted the tuft of titmouse along that trail. That that I enjoyed the trails tremendously, and um, I did spot a, um, a dark-eyed junco too, and uh, that was kind of high up. Usually I see them low low in the ground, lower to the ground, but uh, so I was surprised about that. But, uh, okay, next slide. And I did get an off-trail permit for my last visit. Uh, I decided uh, I, I really wanted to photograph the, the waterfall. Um, they call it the secret waterfall. And um, and to do that best is to, to get it uh, by walking up the creek itself. And um, it also gave me the opportunity to photograph the mill from from an off trail position as well. Um, I think too. I I want to go back again uh, sometime when there's maybe more water running. I'll get that off trail permit again. Hopefully, it's easy to get. Uh, I would I hope regularly. And, uh, but uh, just a wonderful place to hike. And even though I didn't see, I don't I don't think I saw more than ten species of birds. It was, I just thoroughly enjoyed spending lots of time taking my time to the trails there. Okay, what's next? Uh, a couple more. They did fill the lake just around Thanksgiving time, and so I did get a, well, it wasn't quite totally full, um, but I got another view with some reflections of the mill from a little bit above it on the opposite side. And, um, and then when I showed up that time to the, it was actually, I was there early, and it was chilly, and it was frost all over that area initially. Um, but later on, I um, really, the light was better. And uh, I got this photo here with the Christmas tree at the mill um, that they had there. And uh, that picture there is uh, turning up to be my Christmas card to uh, many of my family mm -hmm. this year. Okay, next. All right. Well, thank you, Tom, for presenting your portion. Lots of lovely photos to, to take a look at. And I encourage everyone uh, when uh, this scrapbook is published to go back in there and, and take your time just looking through. We kind of, we kind of flew through it tonight in the interest of time, but uh, there are some really lovely, lovely photos to admire. Um, in there. So I want to uh, extend a huge thank you to um, all of those who went out to Richfield Heritage Preserve, uh, Marianne and John Henderson, Al Rand, Sean Missick, and Tom Fishburn. And uh, a really huge thank you to Richfield Joint Recreation District for uh, maintaining Richfield Heritage Preserve. I included the address there for anyone who might be watching uh, the recording or, or present tonight who might want to go and take a look for themselves. Uh, I put that right in my GPS and it, it took me right there, no problems. It, it wasn't off the beaten path or anything. Um, and then uh, please visit wcaudubon.org for more virtual field trip opportunities. Uh, we have uh, them running every month. Um, I know 
this month is Sandy Ridge. Uh, so if you want to go out to the Sandy Ridge location, take a look around, um, maybe keep a bird list, do some journaling, uh, take a few pictures and send them to me. I would really appreciate that. All of um, your submissions really just bring this presentation to life. Uh, you know, I, I have my little piece that I say, but that wouldn't nearly be enough to, to make it as, as rich and comprehensive as um, it is with all of your participation. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, and so, and, and a lovely photo to admire here of a golden crown kinglet um, taken by Tom Fishburne. I just think this is such a cute and playful picture of that bird. Very, very cute. Um, and so with that, I would like to open it up for discussion. If anyone has any questions or any additional comments, uh, please feel free to unmute yourselves and speak. Or you can send a chat. I'll monitor the chat. Oh, Nancy says, wonderful photos, stories. It felt like I was there. Thank you, Nancy. Michelle, I want to say thank you for uh, including my macro shots. Of course. Those, uh, th those were one of those, just, it was a pleasant surprise. And like I said, that mosquito, you know, it was middle of November, end of November. Like, what the heck is that thing still doing here? <laughs> um, but like I said, I, I absolutely loved it. It stood completely still for me, so it was perfect. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to try and get something macro for um, Sandy Ridge, but so far the only thing I'm finding is, um, like, flowers and um, mm. the shells of flowers and stuff, so I'm not really finding any critters because they've kind well, of all yeah. hidden. Yeah, that's still fun, though. I've seen um, some of those you've you posted on Facebook, and, and they're they're nice. Um, and macro Thank can you. be a lot of fun. I, I don't have, well, I do have a macro lens for my camera, um, but I haven't really used it yet. I have um, a clip-on for my iPhone because my kids are really interested in, in bugs. And so I have, like, the iNaturals app on my phone, so I'll put the clip-on and I'll, I'll get a really close shot of um, any type of bug they see crawling around. And I really do enjoy taking pictures of spiders, which is how I found out about the Spider in Ohio uh, Facebook group um, for those of you who want to venture beyond birds. <laughs> and there's also a Butterfly in Ohio group. Actually, I think it's called Spiders Ohio. You know what? I'll I'll I'll, I'll look it up, Sean, and I'll get that exact name um, to you. I, I actually um, I found it. It is Spiders Ohio. Oh, did you? Okay, and, good. Uh, good. Yeah, I've already okay. asked to join, so we'll see okay, what happens. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. I I, I enjoy that group. Um, and then the, there's not much going on in the butterfly butterfly in Ohio page right now. <laughs> uh, but a few months during the summer, it really does light up and your news feed is just full of butterflies, which can be a lot of fun as well. But yeah, my favorite um, thing to, to photograph with a macro is definitely spiders, and especially like when they're on the web. Uh, like the, the orb weavers are my favorite. They're just, they're really pretty. Um, yes. Agreed. Yeah. I've uh, I've contemplated picking up a set of extension tubes so that I can go macro even further and uh, potentially get something like snowflakes. So. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. We'll we'll see how far I feel like taking this. <laughs> Sky's the limit. <laughs> yeah, Michelle. I, I I had a a note from I believe his name is David Green. He's the park manager there at Richfield. And he really appreciates uh, eBird sightings because um, he looks at eBird and he just wants to keep a, a good list. So for those who are out there, um, you know, send your, I, I think it is now a hotspot, and uh, so send your eBird uh, listings in and David will look them through and he'll get a nice uh, list of birds for that area. And maybe in the future they'll have a checklist. That's a really good point. Thank you, Nancy. Um, yeah, I, I definitely eBird every time I go out. The, the two days I went, I eBirded both of those days. So, um, and, and eBird is, I, I feel like it's getting easier to use. You don't, sometimes you don't even have to know the exact species. Like, I think there's, if, if you see a sparrow, I think there's a sparrow SP. And so even if you don't know which sparrow it is, you could still put it in that you saw a sparrow um, and, until your skills and identification improve. So it's, it's getting easier to use. Um, and sometimes you just see, you just see some, you see it quick and you're not sure what it is. Um, 
but you 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 know that it's a sparrow or um, that it was or and even like with the downy and hairy woodpeckers, those are one of those species that it can get kind of confusing because they look so much alike. Yes, the hairies are a little bigger, but if you don't see it next to a downy, how do you know? <laughs> um, I always look at the bill size, but you know if it's turning away from you, you might not see it. There's a couple other, you know, but they have you know a downy slash hairy category in eBird. So if you're not sure which one, you can still log that you saw it, and it's still very helpful um, to the Cornell Lab, who um, owns and manages the the eBird app. Yeah, and you can get it on your phone, so you can eBird as you go, or you can just keep a paper list and um, just pull it up on the computer when you get home. All right, any additional comments or, or questions? So we have, you know, Tom and Sean are both here who, who went to the preserve, or me. <laughs> if you had any questions about anything we saw? I love red squirrels. I didn't see them. I'm disappointed. <laughs> I know, I didn't see them there either. I have one that, that lives, like, in my yard, and I, I take pictures of that sometimes. Um, but it's very oh, cute. And nice. Nancy's the one. I put it on Facebook, and I just thought it was some baby squirrel. And Nancy's the one. I was like, no, that's an adult red squirrel. <laughs> so thank you, Nancy. You're not only helping with bird ID, but all the other critters that I see. <laughs> you just don't Those want them in your house. We had one, we had no, one get in right. our house. <laughs> yeah. I caught it. And I, have a nice I took it far, baffle. far away. Uh-huh. And you put a baffle on your bird feeder, and then you're fine. Oh, yeah. At first, I didn't mind feeding the squirrel. I was like, oh, yes, it's food, whatever. And then, like, a squirrel can eat through an entire suet block in one day, and that's like a $10 block, <laughs> it seems. So I'm like, yeah, I'm not feeding the squirrels anymore. <laughs> they can forage. Those red squirrels that I saw, was, I only saw them on the second trip that I made, and that was it. And I didn't see any more any of the other times. I did see the black uh, morph squirrels, but they were busy. I was hoping to get a picture of one of those, but I didn't manage. Mm -hmm. I did have a black squirrel playing peekaboo with me, and the pictures that I got were mediocre at best. So that happens. And that uh, that northern flicker, uh, like you said, Michelle, that was that was a shot, and it was one of those. I walked around, looked up, saw it poking its head out, pointed the lens right at it, click, 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 and it was gone. So that was uh, one of those once in a lifetime, right place, right time kind of Just shot. Lucky, lucky it turned out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, lucky the yeah, flicker was gone. Yeah. <laughs> I actually had to do quite a bit of editing to it to get it to look that good because the shadows were so bad in mm -hmm. that crevice and on its face that it needed that extra little touch to, to at least resemble a bird. Um, but I, I'm going to say it's the magic of the, the whole entire place. Um, and, you know, like, like Tom said, it's it's truly a beautiful place there, and I could just walk it and not even take pictures of birds and still absolutely enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a place I will return to at some point. I, I think that um, Al, Al Rand had made the comment in his submission that um, he would like to go back during peak migration, and I think I'm going to do that as well, just to see what's there, just to see what comes through. And uh, apparently... Um, uh, the the manager is it, he said James or Dave, the manager would would appreciate that I mean, to know what was flying through at peak migration. So, all right. Well, if there's nothing further, thank you all for joining me this evening and for hanging in there um, through our our tough start. <laughs> um, you know, you gotta love the technical difficulties, but you know we got through the presentation and. Um, it was it was a really November was a really good month at at the preserve. So please, if if you're interested at all, please join me for Sandy Ridge. Uh, go visit the location, and if you can't make it there, that's that's fine. Um, join join us for the call in January, second Wednesday um, in January at 7 p.m.
All right. Thank you all, and have a good evening. Thank you. Good night.